Hello and welcome. We are going to continue our usual videos of UCE 2020 and we are looking at question 5. When a mixture of dilute sodium hydroxide solution and a substance containing a cation Q was heated, a gas X which gave dense white fumes with hydrogen chloride was evolved. So question A they are asking us to identify the cation. Remember cation positively charged iron the cation Q. So in this question, all you need to know to have an idea is the word dense white fumes. Once you see dense white fumes being formed with hydrogen chloride gas, this one will mean that we are actually having our ammonium chloride fumes, which will be our dense white fumes. So once you have an idea on this, we can then work backwards to find the cation Q. Now, for you to form these dense white fumes, it means you must combine our hydrogen chloride with ammonia gas. So, how can we produce ammonia gas? That means our gas X is going to be ammonia. And for us to produce the ammonia gas, that means we shall have to prepare it with the help of a hydroxide. So, usually in the, in the lab, we prepare ammonia gas by reacting an alkali with a salt of ammonia an ammonium salt ammonium salt with an alkali you always produce your ammonia so our alkali in this case is sodium hydroxide with a substance containing a cation Q now the cation Q is this ammonium salt ammonium with the salt. It could be ammonium chloride, for example, the common one. So identify the cation Q. So our cation will be the positively charged portion of the ammonium salt, which will be the ammonium ion or ammonium. You can also say ammonium. It has no problem. Ammonium is positively charged. So this is the cation they want us to identify. Then identify gas X. We have already identified it gas x is ammonia or still you can say ammonia gas it has no problem but at least you write one whether ammonia since they have said identify in this case if you write the formula it's fine but if they had said name if they say name we don't need to write the chemical formula of ammonia or even the, um, the ammonium ion in that case we shall write the actual name which is ammonia Write the equation for the reaction leading to the formation of X, which is ammonia. Like we have said, in this case, our alkali is sodium hydroxide. So we shall have our sodium hydroxide reacting with our ammonium chloride. So in that case, we are going to form our ammonia, water, and the salt. So we shall get our ammonium chloride solid. We shall get our sodium hydroxide solution, which is aqueous. Then we shall produce our ammonia. The salt, which is sodium chloride, which is also soluble in water. And then the water that will be formed. So this reaction normally involves some heating. Although in this case they have not specified, but they could ask how the reaction can be brought about. Maybe sodium hydroxide. We shall just need some simple warming. So good enough, it's balanced. So we shall have one and a half marks for this equation leading to the formation of our gas X, which is ammonia. Write the equation leading to the formation of the dense white films. We have already seen our dense white films are these ones here. But in this case, our equation, we can actually either use gas or solid, as we shall see. So with our dense white films, we shall obviously just combine the hydrogen chloride together with our ammonia, which is gas X. So once hydrogen chloride gas reacts with ammonia gas, we shall form the dense white films. And these are due to the formation of the ammonium chloride. So these are the dense white films. So in this case, I'm having a solid here because it will tend to, to undergo sublimation. As we know, ammonium chloride can undergo 
sublimation. So immediately it can condense and form a solid, but even if you put here a gas, it has no problem because actually they're talking about the white fumes. Then lastly, we have part C. It isn't clear, but we shall have to persevere. Part C was talking about X was bubbled through a solution containing zinc ions. So zinc ions, it means we have zinc ions in solution until there was no further change. Now, until there was no further change means that probably our gas X was bubbled in excess over a long period of time into this solution. Remember our X is our ammonia gas. Now if we have our, if we are having our zinc ions, they are in solution. So if bubble ammonia, which is a very highly soluble gas into our solution, you will find that we shall have our ammonium solution, which is basically dissolving our ammonia in our water. So we are forming an ammonium ammonia solution. So this is what we have. And in this case, you need to have some little concepts on qualitative analysis and how we can identify different cations. Zinc ions are well known for being soluble in, for being, for their given precipitate being soluble in excess as we are going to see. So state what was observed. Now for you to come up with the observation, you need to know what actually happens. So initially, when we bubble our ammonia into the zinc ions, what will happen is that we shall get these zinc ions reacting with the hydroxide component to form an insoluble white precipitate. So we shall have our zinc hydroxide. We shall first form our zinc hydroxide, which is white in color. So you will see a white precipitate being formed at first. So this is when we add little of this ammonia. If we bubble little ammonia gas, we shall see that we shall form a white precipitate. However, since they have said until no further change, that means we shall have to bubble excess ammonia. Now, when we bubble excess ammonia, that means the initially insoluble hydroxide of, of our zinc Maybe we could use ions. Okay, let's use ions for simplicity. When we use our ions, what happens is that this, this zinc hydroxide, if we add excess of this, it will dissolve by forming a complex. It will form a complex ion, which is our tetraamine zinc. This is tetra amine zinc to iron so this one is the reason as to why we shall say white precipitate but now this iron here is soluble so when we bubble our ammonia into zinc ions what happens we shall first see a white precipitate we shall see a white precipitate that is half a mark this precipitate is soluble on addition of excess X which is our excess ammonia giving a colorless solution so this tetraamine zinc to iron in solution it is colorless so sometimes in practicals we may need to write some of these equations but in this case we just need to know the knowledge about how we can try to confirm different cations in this case the zinc iron so we shall say white precipitate due to the formation of the zinc hydroxide and then this precipitate is soluble on addition of excess ammonia giving a colorless solution which is one and a half max that's all for question five let's keep in touch for question six thanks for watching stay safe